Good morning, YouTube. It's 10 a.m. in the great state of Texas, and this is take three of my commentary. So, if you guys saw by the thumbnail, you know that we're not doing a bowl today. We're not working with an epoxy bowl. We're not doing a wood blank bowl, but we're going to make a table. And if you guys have been watching the channel for any amount of time, you guys have seen me do these tables before in the past. And what we're going to be doing is using a teak wood slab and putting a cool little design in it and kind of just making it our own. So this will be like the third iteration of this table that I've made. I've done this before in the past. All I do is essentially order a teak wood slab that's already been treated. It's already had a lot of the work done and that's what we're doing here, just cutting down this box. And it ships through Amazon and it comes with a lot of paper. So this is what the, the slab itself looks like. A lot smaller than I'm used to. Uh, we haven't done one of these tables since about December. This one came with a bunch of cracks in it and it's looking a little rougher than I remember ordering. So really nice piece of wood, nice slab. This is essentially the root portion of the actual tree itself, but it still has some really good grain, some really good color. They already come pre-finished or pre-fabricated, but it's got a lot of character to it, but usually what we do is just sand this all down. It comes with this polish and finish, but it really doesn't look good. But once we add the epoxy, do our design to it, it's going to look a lot better. So since this is our third generation of doing this, I've kind of become an expert in how to manage it. And you can see there, I'm already having issues. It helps if you actually put the uh, you know, disc sander pad on there with actual sandpaper. As you can see there, I was trying to sand this thing with that, without sandpaper. But essentially we're using, uh, this is either 80 grit, I think this is 80 grit sandpaper, just to take that nice base layer of whatever it is off of the actual table itself. And it's super uneven and it's kind of wonky. This is probably one of the uh, more complicated pieces that I've worked with. Usually they come a lot smoother, they're a lot flatter, but this one for some reason might have been the bottom of the barrel when I ordered it and uh, has a lot of hills in it. It's got some divots, some pretty significant cracks in it as well, but uh, you know, one problem at a time. So here we are just sanding off that top layer and then I'm taking the blower and just getting rid of all that uh, sawdust that's pretty much everywhere. But this part, you know, it's a necessary evil. You have to sand and grind all down. It takes a lot of time to do but it's really gonna you know, pay off in the end. So once we use the belt sander, then we came back with a couple of sheets of the 80 grit sandpaper, and we're just finishing the spots that we wanna do, just making sure everything is nice and even and as flat as possible. And I'm not worried about the unevenness of it. This Again, this table will go to me, uh, and I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about sanding off that top layer. And I'm not working on the edges here at all. And now we're gonna actually start the actual divot portion of it. So my handy dandy DeWalt router here, this is probably one of the best things I picked up. So uh, I've got a whole router kit as well that with different kinds of bits in it. And this seems to have helped a whole lot. So we're gonna get a little bit more in-depth design. It's pretty much essentially like a river or a lightning table. I don't know what exactly to call this, but uh, you can see this is like just the first iteration of it and we're just getting our design essentially set up and the teak wood shavings are really wet and the moisture in there doesn't allow for a whole lot to blow through so I got to come back with a nail and literally get all that sawdust out of it but you can see here what it kind of looks like once we get everything out of the divots and then I come back with a smaller thinner carbide not carbide tool but a uh, router bit and then we're just gonna make a little a smaller lines there. And it looks pretty cool. I like how this is setting up again. This is the third time I've done this table and the battery died so I had to come back, change all that out. But you can see there some of the thinner lines that we did and it looks really cool. I like how this looks. Uh, go back and watch the first table I did. I thought that one looked amazing. I thought the one I did last time was amazing. But this one's gonna come out a lot cooler. So. Here I am essentially trying to get all these little shavings out of the teak, out of the grooves there. And you can see what the pattern looks like kind of sort of right there. And I'm having to spend like an hour with a nail, literally getting all of these little shavings out of these little grooves. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to have issues with the epoxy a little bit later.
but that was really tedious and that was a hard process to kind of work through and that just took forever. So we're using Total Boat on this one. So essentially what I wanted to do, this was going to be my Red Raider because I went to the University of Texas Tech and our colors are uh, red and black. And I, for some reason, out of all the pigments that I had, I thought I had red. This looked like red. It turns out to be more pink. But I was like, okay, we're, we're already here. And you can see some other colors on the side there. The black looks really, really good. But the pink, uh, it looks a little wonky, uh, as you'll see here in just a little bit. So essentially, I'm going for like a submersion of like these two colors. And I think it looks really, really good, in my opinion. I really like how this looks and clashes. And in spite of this being pink, it still looks really cool, in my opinion. Uh, you got that kind of swirling of colors coming together and it looks really really cool it's not red but we'll figure that out on the next table for sure and then we're just coming back and layering everything you can see the tables uneven so the epoxy is going to set up a little bit uneven but that won't be a problem because I'll come back and fix that as well but you can see here we're just sliding through making sure that first layer of epoxy goes on uh, pretty smooth and it looks really cool. I'm happy how this looks. The black and pink doesn't look bad, but it's not red. It's not the Texas Tech colors. And then I'm coming through with a heat gun and just popping all those little bubbles. So then we let that dry for about two days. And then we come back and put on that last top layer. And then I'm going to come back and seal the edges of the wood as well. And you guys uh, will get to see that here in just a little bit. And a lot of this is just popping bubbles as that epoxy sets through and then having to come through with the brush and then just making sure that the walls of the actual slab themselves is sealed through. But overall, really happy how this looks uh, initially. And again, this was a different you know, type of slab. It's the same slab, but it was really wonky. I don't have a flattener or a uh, planer that will work as far as flattening that, but it, it worked off really relatively good so once we got the actual epoxy set up now we're just coming back with the chisels and those little bubbles that are on the bottom of them we're just popping those through we're gonna sand those all down and then we're gonna be able to have a flat surface to work with again so that's all we're doing here nobody will ever see the bottom of the table so I'm not too worried again this is gonna go in my personal office so I'm not too worried about it uh, just making sure everything is nice flat and even and then once we get all those little epoxy bubbles that set up, we'll be all done and we can add the legs to it. But it's like a thousand degrees in the state of Texas, so getting into the workshop to do these projects is kind of, ah, it's kind of hard. But uh, usually it comes with a prefabricated square on the bottom of these tables. For some reason it didn't in this one, but that's not a real issue here. I imagine because of the way the wood was warped and the giant cracks that are in it, they probably weren't able to do that. So all I'm doing here is setting up the legs where I want them. I'm going to drill some prefabricated holes in them so that the guides go through relatively easy. Uh, and again, you can see the wobble that's on the bottom of this. And I'm like, oh my goodness. But I do plan on doing another one of these projects. I really like doing these tables. Uh, in spite of them essentially being the same thing, I still like to make them. They're a lot of fun. Uh, so here we are. We're going to go ahead and put in the actual legs themselves, putting in these screws that will be permanently in there. And you can see it there in the background. Uh, I'm actually putting 15 minute epoxy on the screws so that they set up in the wood really well. These legs will never come off. So this is a one piece type of table. Uh, but overall, use your impact driver and this is the end result. I think it looks really, really cool. This epoxy, the black and the pink. You know, pink's a cool color, I guess, but uh, I think it goes well together, those two colors. Next time we will do the Red Raider table where it'll be red and black. But you can just see the glitter that's in there. I also added a little bit of glitter. And I think it looks really cool. I, even though this piece of wood is really warped, it looks really wonky. I think it has a lot of character. I like how this looks. One of my favorite tables. I think this is better than the previous table that I built. But really happy how it looks. The shine. There's no bubbles in the epoxy. It's sealed real well. There's a giant crack there. And then this giant hole in the middle kind of gives it a lot of character as well. But really happy how overall this turned out again doing something different on the channel it's not bowls it's not uh, epoxy in the truest sense that i usually use epoxy but 
Uh, I'm going to be making some tables and some things uh, here in the next couple of weeks or so. So anyway, hope you guys like this one. Hope you think this one looks as good as I think it looks. And uh, yeah, hope you guys are staying cool as well. It's like 90, 100 degrees here in Texas. But overall, I got the project done and it looks really cool. So hope you guys liked it and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, peace.